We open on Crichton waiting for a long time. Rimmer asks what he's doing, and Crichton says that he's waiting for Lister to show up. We're working on the human emotion patience. How long have you been waiting? About three hours, sir. I think it might be part of the program. Either that or he's just forgotten. What do you want to learn about patience for? No one needs patience. It's just an excuse for loafing about. I hate to bring up Time Wave, but this makes me realize another issue with it. Someone who is as military-minded as Rimmer wouldn't be for banning criticism. Get on with it. That's what I say. Lickety-split. Anyway, Rimmer steps in and demands to teach Crichton patience himself. Start! What? Start! Jump to it! Uh, yes, sir. Impatiently. Skip rotations, onto the next. But, but sure, we- Onwards! Anyway, one way to foster patience is to not overload yourself with work and delegate tasks as needed. Get on with it! Mop B deck, that completes today's lesson. That bit was almost Bugs Bunny-like. It works so well, Rimmer actually goes about mopping the deck. I guess refusing to do it would mean that he was wrong to encourage Crichton to delegate. Oh, I think you may have missed a little section over there. Anyway, Lister finally shows up, and this is great. Now, what were you to work on today? It, it was patience. I remember we were working on patience. It was manipulation. Wow, go Crichton. <laughs> Mop the diesel decks end to end, all five miles. Now, Milado. So they go to Yellow Alert. But Yellow Alert is definitely my all-time favorite alert color. It means someone's in danger, but it's not you. <laughs> so yeah, it turns out that another ship is about to get sucked into a black hole. Some man, just an onboard computer. Meanwhile, Lister is downloading data from the ship to the main drive instead of to a quarantined one. Lister, has your brain gone 404? You've let road data onto our drive without an SC. So as punishment, Rimmer promotes Lister so he can demote him. Don't stand up, bud, it's a trap! I have the privilege to advise that you, third technician David Lister, have been promoted. Which makes me equal with you, so now you can't demote me. Have been promoted from third technician to technician 2.5. Lister doesn't care, of course, but Rimmer's not giving up. Maybe I won't demote you. He gives him a pep talk to make him feel good about being promoted. Just imagine how proud your gran would be if she'd know that you'd be promoted. Or I should have been made up. She always told me that you're one... demoted. That was amazingly petty, yet so in character for both of them. Sir, what on earth is happening? It turns out that Lister doesn't even know what he's been downloading, except that it's something called e cargo. And now they've got a virus. That was just a front to attract the deeply stupid. Oh, sir, you didn't stand a chance. Malicious software designed to render the ship inoperable. They're also headed towards the black hole with no way to stop it. So Crichton runs an antivirus program, but isn't sure it'll work, so they have to abandon ship, at least for the moment. While getting ready to go, Lister grabbed a bunch of items from someone else's quarters, including a pair of reading glasses. Turns out the cat has become far-sighted, which Rimmer discovers. Wait till the others hear about this. And... No, I've got to do the right thing here. Keep it secret for now, then blackmail you later when I need something. Well, he's even a bigger smeg head than usual in this one. What's happening? Oh, we're abandoning ship. Meanwhile, the vending machines are under the impression that they'll be taken off the ship as well. We are on the leavers list, aren't we? I'm not the list guy. Of course, Lister pawns him off on Rimmer. He's only taking things that are indispensably essential. Piney Shine, the old purpose cleaner. Can't leave this bad boy behind. But it turns out that the antivirus software worked after all, and they don't need to go anywhere. It appears all the machines on board have combined their processing time to help the AV software. He said all of the machines. Does that mean the vending machines too? Like they helped save the ship because they didn't want to die? That's an interesting detail I didn't pick up on before. Give me a milk, would you? Sorry, I can't help you. But now the vending machines are on strike. So is the elevator. And the scudders. It seems they feel they don't have anyone on board looking after their interests. But yeah, this is a bigger problem than it seems on the surface. They're stuck on this floor with no way to get to the supply room, so there's currently no way for them to get food. It also appears he who manages the machines controls the ship. Rimmer liked the sound of that. So Rimmer is appointing himself as a liaison between the machines and crew. For purely unselfish reasons, of course. Isn't it time machines were given a voice? But sir, shut up, I'm talking. Despite the fact that Crichton is a machine and a member of the crew, so he'd be the more obvious choice. I'm proposing myself to stand for election as machine president. In which case, so am I. So they're running against each other. 
Later, Crichton has already spoken to the machines. They've agreed to restore all services on the understanding that a member of the crew is elected to represent them. Anyway, naturally, Crichton asks Lister to be his running mate. Come in, Mr. President. Oh. That just leaves Rimmer with one person. It's like picking a football team and I'm left with the snotty club-footed kid with a patch over one eye and the super strength asthma inhaler. I'll take him. Of course, Cat doesn't want to help Rimmer. I've always admired those who stick to their principles. I raise my glasses to you. Oh, come on, Rimmer. You know damn well he's not going to catch the hints. Because I know you'll see my point of view. <laughs> he actually does eventually get it. Maybe I will work with you. Working with him will be, uh, cool. Poor kitty. We've got to win this. Vote now for the lovely, fluffy, liberal alliance party. I'm going to win by having the best policies. So, Rimmer starts off sounding like he's determined to help them. How are you going to achieve all that? By lying, of course. Yeah, of course. Meanwhile, Lister is telling Crichton that because the campaign is about equal rights, Crichton should start calling him Dave. I'll call you, sir. Or maybe one day, Mr. President. Oh, it feels so wrong, Dave. Oh, I did it. But Crichton's already starting to get cold feet. But you help machines attain equal rights and one day they take over the world? Sir, take a look around you. The machines have already taken over the world. Very true, even if the creators seem to keep forgetting that Lister is supposed to be the last human alive. Back to Rimmer, it pretty much goes without saying where he's gonna go with his campaign. A massive smear campaign on Crichton. Meanwhile, Crichton is talking to the vending machines, but he's interrupted. But do the electorate know this droid has a history of mental illness? Hey, showing clips from old episodes to make a point is my job, damn it. I do love how this stuff is being taken out of context, though. Especially this shot with the middle finger. He wasn't flipping anyone off, he was using a finger to demonstrate something, and it happened to be the middle finger because rule of funny. That said, I've seen it used as a reaction image out of context, so that makes it extra amusing. Speaking of Crichton flipping the bird, here's a callback all the way back to season two. He tended a crew of skeletons, believing them to be alive. He now wants to look after you. Lister doesn't get off without criticism either. A man who served a jail term in stasis for smuggling unquarantined animals aboard a JMC mining ship? That's so funny coming from Cat, considering he wouldn't exist if not for Lister doing that. This commercial was approved by Arnold J. Rimmer. Elections really are the worst, aren't they? Later, Rimmer is schmoozing with all the machines. Hello, little fellas. How are you? Aren't they adorable? Scudders are adorable. I'm glad someone else finally noticed. All dispensers will be fitted with feet. Or we'll be able to walk. You'll be able to dance, and that's a promise. I like him. <laughs> but here comes the other smear campaign. Arnold Rimmer, a man who wiped out the crew of Red Dwarf and killed himself twice. Context wouldn't help Rimmer's case, though. By the way, I love that they both use the same stock image of a skeleton. I'm Crichton 2X4B, and I approve this message. I've got more! <laughs> They've sunk as low as us! <sighs> that disgusts me! And now for the expected debate. I have a series of questions neither of the candidates has seen. Let's start. The first question is if Rimmer believes in Silicon Heaven. You mean, do I believe there's an actual place with the souls of blenders and photocopiers where they're somehow reincarnated and they meet their old owners? Yes, I do. That's kind of an amusing parody of how politicians try to appeal to Christians. Crichton is asked about a single change that can improve the life of machines. Being one himself, he has a pretty thoughtful answer. He'd never had the opportunity to break his programming and become something more. Question for Mr. Rimmer. What's your opinion on deleting documents? Do you believe that's murder, or is a document not yet a fully formed file until it's saved? <laughs> yeah, Rimmer's basically asked his stance on abortion. That's cute. I personally believe the exact same thing you believe. <laughs> that's really the only way to answer. Later, it turns out that Crichton and Rimmer are neck and neck at the polls, but there is one swing vote that could change everything. Not the garbage hold. So why is Lister so apprehensive? Yes! <laughs> Admit it, you missed Talky Toaster. Stop lying, I still know you did. He's been down here in the garbage hold for nearly two decades. I very much doubt he'll be the same annoying- Howdy doodly do! And he's got the same voice he had before. I just have one question. Don't even go there. I know the question. What is it? Would you like some toast? No, I'm fine, thank you. Why, would you like some toast? 
Technically, Lister started it. How about some Cleo? Yeah, we all know this routine by now. Lister tries to head him off at the pass by mentioning every single variation of toast that he doesn't want. Muffins it is, coming right up. Yeah, it's predictable, but I still enjoyed hearing it again. So if they want his vote, they're gonna have to make a deal with him. Well, I want out of the garbage hole. Fine. You eat 11 pieces of toast each morning. Three. Nine. Four. Seven and one croissant. Fine. <laughs> you have my vote. Later, Crichton has won. It's followed by a cute bit about Cat and his glasses, but I've gotta save something for the Cat videos. It's been hard to not talk about Cat this season with how many great scenes he's gotten. But I will mention that he got back at Rimmer by locking him in the garbage hold. On his own? Of course not! I think we all know where this is going. Would you like some toast? Would you like some toast? No! Would you like some toast? And so ends Mechocracy. This was a pretty cute episode, but it's one of those that's pretty straightforward, so this segment is gonna be brief. Basically, it was just funny. Rimmer is at his utmost smegginess, but Crichton manages to get a couple big jabs at him, which is always refreshing. And of course, I also like the little subplot with Cat. Not to mention that storylines that poke fun at how awful presidential elections can be are always fun. I guess something could be said about the fact that the machines are sentient, yet none of the crew has any qualms about leaving them to die, as it were. So yeah, maybe they have a right to, well, demand rights. But this episode doesn't really go that deeply into it. And of course, there's Talky Toaster. One complaint I've heard about Season 12 is that it's very fan y which, yeah, it totally is. But I'm a fan, so I don't mind. They aren't the deepest episodes, and I guess I could understand thinking that it's a lazy way to go, but I think they're fun. And hell, at least there isn't anything icky or preachy in this episode, like with Time Wave. Spoiler, that's really the only episode of Season 12 that I specifically disliked. Next up is M-Corp. See you then. Aren't we all machines just made out of different stuff? I mean, when you tickle us, don't we all laugh? When you prick us, don't we all say, smegger, now you prick me, you smegger. <laughs>